guys, it's Jen and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Today I am doing a really fun video. It's eating like Chris and Cavallari for a week and I'm doing this um, because there's a lot of information out there about what she eats. I have her True Roots cookbook. I also did a Kristen inspired um, Whole Foods haul, which I will iCard right now. And basically it's been really good so far today i'm actually filming this a few days into the challenge and i've been feeling really good i think the biggest difference is that i'm eating at home a lot more which i think is actually a very good thing and of course organic um mainly gluten-free and dairy-free and all really about whole foods so i'll get into her philosophy a little bit later but let's show you guys a super yummy coffee recipe that is inspired by kristen now and yeah so now i'm just gonna lay out the her diet basically she eats at home a lot and when she's at home she's gluten dairy and refined sugar free um she stays away from processed foods at all times and here are some things that you might find helpful. I think seeing it all um, in writing so that you guys can screenshot it is super helpful. Bright lights, I can't really see right. Cold eyes to hide what it feels like. They take from me what I need from you. Five steps to find my way back to your love, we're due for a comeback. I get from them what I give to you. Please take me back to a dream. Where miles away, a place is never seen. Show me the wonders above. This is so good. The uh, coconut milk was a little chunky, so I'd really stir it up before you drop it into the latte, but this is so good i'm like very obsessed um also the caramel that i showed it hadn't um turned into the right consistency yet it needed to be refrigerated a little bit longer um to become more of like a caramel sauce versus like caramel soup <laughs> but the flavor is still there uh it's really good um if it ends up like kind of thickening up the way that it should later i will show you guys but this is so good i made cookies they are, we're supposed to be like they come from one of her cake pop recipes um, So they weren't supposed to be cooked, but then the batter just looked like such great um, cookie batter so I added some super dark chocolate and Just put them in the oven, but my oven my oven was doing something super weird and it just got super smoky So I had to pull them out before they were ready. So they're very like lightly baked, but I almost like doughy so that's good and then i guess just a quick update i've been really liking this challenge i'm definitely eating at home more and i feel really good about that so um good for the health good for yeah just good for life so that's been really good and i just made one of i think my favorite recipes so far It's not very aesthetic, but it's chicken, which I just um, boiled over water and or boiled in water and or I guess it's like technically poaching chicken and if there's celery, um, carrots, dill, uh, there's some goat's yogurt and I added a little hot sauce and some buffalo sauce. So and a little bit of mayo. Um, but the fresh dill I think really makes it and it's nice and easy. And she suggests wrapping them in some like chard um, as like a wrap. So I haven't done that yet. I just ate it like this and it was so good. Like I feel like I'm gonna start, cause usually I make like one cookie batch per week and I think I'm gonna make one batch of this per week just to like have it so that I can grab um, quick snack before I go to school or grab little container and take it with me so yeah very good so something i've loved about this challenge is that it's, sorry i just woke up and i'm about to get my period so yay for hormonal acne um but 
something that I love about this challenge and eating like Kristen is that I love every single recipe that I've made. Like it's so tasty and like, for example, the caramel sauce, like the caramel latte, like I never feel like I'm deprived. Like I feel like I'm eating all the things that I really like, but because you're making it yourself, you are just making it with better ingredients and you're making smarter choices um, and, and swaps. So instead of white flour, you're doing almond flour. Instead of, um, you know, white sugar, you could do coconut sugar. I do um, monk fruit sugar. So those little swaps like really add up in the day, but you never, like you're eating such good real food that you don't, you don't feel deprived. Like you just feel good and like I feel energized and I never feel hungry. And if I am hungry, I obviously just eat. Um, but I, I think some of like my, my favorites so far are the buffalo chicken salad. Like that will definitely be a staple. That caramel uh, coconut latte is so good. And I love that like one of Kristen's biggest things is that she doesn't look at calories. She just looks at ingredients. And I've noticed that that, noticed that, that has created such a positive change for me. Um, not that I'm like calorie obsessed at all, but I definitely, especially having been on keto and I'll get into that more later. Like I've basically been keto cycling or like I'm just kind of doing a focus on higher fat, but it's not like keto per se, if that makes sense. Um, which I was still able to easily do with Kristen because she incorporates a lot of things like coconut milk, which are high fat anyway, like just naturally. Um, and her, you know, cookie recipes, they, it's a lot of cashew butters and things like that. So it really wasn't hard to kind of put that emphasis on fat because that's something that she uses a lot of healthy fats. Um, so anyway, but I think kind of having done keto since January 1 of this year, I have looked at ingredient labels a lot more than I normally do because I was just trying to make sure that the carbs were all on count. And um, this is kind of shifting it back to like a mentality of like really look at what's in your food. So it, are the ingredients Agree, ingredients things you recognize are there added um dyes or for instance i just noticed that like my monk fruit sweetener that i've been using isn't 100 percent monk fruit and i've been using it for almost a year and i had no idea and i was kind of aggravated at myself for not realizing it but also at the brand because it's a mixture of um i think it's like stevia and monk fruit which is they're just different so i, I don't know or i don't even know if it was stevia but anyway it's not 100 percent monk fruit and if I had read the ingredient list, I would have noticed that. So I think it's been a much healthy, like it's a very healthy shift because I'm looking for foods that just aren't, um, that aren't like super processed and don't have a bajillion ingredients. I don't know what's in them. So I think that's been probably the most positive change. And I definitely feel lean, like even though I'm eating you know, a lot more carbs and things that I have been for the past few months. Um, I mean, they're like healthy carbs, like uh, like quinoa or even had like a piece of Ezekiel bread, things like that, which I hadn't had in my diet and I feel very lean still. So I think a lot of that is like, if you cook from home versus eating out, cause that is one of the things and a huge reason I wanted to do this challenge was that I felt like I was just eating out so much. And I know when I was first starting my health and fitness journey that that was a huge difference or like a big change that made a huge difference for me was just cooking things at home and you're able to like enjoy all your foods, but um, you know, just by the very nature of going out, there's gonna be more stuff added. And um, you know, their restaurants are, are making food to make it taste good. They're not usually, interested in making them super healthy. And even if you go to a health related um, restaurant, you know, it's still not usually as healthy as getting it or making it at home. So I think that was really, really good. The only thing that I had some trouble with was that 80% of her diet is healthy and she eats at home so much and then 20% is eating out and whatever she wants. But because I still eat out more than her, um, just by the very nature of my life, like I made a huge effort and ate, you know, so many more meals at home, but I was still eating out, you know, maybe once a day for 
whether that's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, you know, there was usually some meal throughout the day that I was eating out because, again, that's like the, it's just how my life is. So I found that a little bit harder to follow her 80-20 rule because every time she goes out, she kind of just lets herself eat what she wants to eat. Whereas when I was eating out, I was like, okay, well, is this my 20% or is this me trying to save my 80%? So I think that was a little bit harder to navigate. So if you're somebody who eats at home all the time, then the 80-20 rule is really good. If you're somebody like me who is making an effort to make way more of my meals at home, but still does eat out, then that 80-20 rule doesn't really work. Like I think I would need my own sort of parameter around that like maybe two meals that I eat out or one meal that I eat out that week is kind of like a go for it and then all the other meals are eating as, as clean as I can and as similarly as I would to eating at home. But one thing I've noticed is just like cooking at home, I am not like holding on as much salt. So even though I've been eating more carbs than I have because I've been keto, um, I'm just like looking very lean and I it's hard. Like I feel like in cameras you can't always see it. Like there's a lot of shadowing and stuff that's not picked up on the camera, um, which you can kind of see here. But um, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. So I kind of adapted the bites and strips steak and veggie kebab and it just kind of made it more of a stir fry but it's super good and I would highly recommend but basically you could take any type of meat, like olive oil, oregano, parsley, uh, garlic, pink Himalayan, salt, pink Himalayan salt, zucchini, red onion, um, mushrooms and then I added some carrots as well but it doesn't look the most appetizing but it's so so good starting to make some pecan milk. I just have some chopped pecans from Whole Foods and I'm soaking the nuts so that they're easier to digest but also so that they break down easier in the blender. And Kristen's known for making a lot of her own homemade milks. I love pecan milk so I'm excited to make it. Look who's coming to join. honestly so good pecan butter and pecan milk it's so underrated I don't even know so good so now I'm gonna make a matcha using the pecan milk that we just made so whatever is left and then I just put this in I just put this in the fridge so I can use it for the rest of the week for lattes or just to sip on matchas all those things so we're gonna have matcha coconut oil or you could do coconut butter i'm gonna add a little bit of coconut milk sweetener of your choice and vanilla extract so we pour that macan milk that we have about that much i'm actually going to keep this out to blend the matcha after about that much matcha like this much coconut milk, a little bit of vanilla extract, a bit of sweetener of your choice. She uses, uh, what's called, maple syrup a lot. But you could also use honey. So now it kind of looks like this. And if you had like a matcha whisk, then you probably wouldn't need to do the next step, which is a blender. So I wait for this to bubble a little bit and then I'll put it in a blender. I'm waiting for this to boil just a tidbit um one thing is that she i feel like what a lot of what i've shown is kind of snacky stuff but if you're looking for just some of her more like dinner ideas like honestly just whatever cut of meat and some veggies like that's a huge part of what she eats so she's not afraid of like bison and she loves duck so kind of branching out on the meats to keep things interesting um, and then, yeah, you can kind of do whatever you want with the sides. Um, 
yeah, I'm sorry I like didn't show more of like the meals. I feel like a lot of what I'm showing you is kind of like granola and cookies and matchas and lattes and things that I just really liked and the chicken salad was just so good. Um, but I also have been eating kind of, you know, whatever meat and veggies at night. So just wanted to kind of say that. And then in the mornings, she does a lot of different like oatmeals. Um, she does chia puddings and things like that. So yeah, I definitely, I've also, she has like an egg um, sandwich, which is like Ezekiel bread and an egg, prosciutto, mayo, avocado. I had that and I'm sorry, I don't think I caught fo footage of that, which I don't know why I didn't do that, um, but that was super good. And yeah, there's also a lot like a sweet potato hash. Um, but yeah, all very good things. Lights, I can't really see right Cold eyes to hide what it feels like They take from me what I need from you Fast steps to find my way back to so, so, your so love good. I do for a comeback mm -hmm. I get from them a final thought I really enjoyed Kristen's diet I think it's a very like doable diet um, I think the focus on real foods and um, just making like swaps so thing like never you love she talks about having loved you know like a caramel uh, ice caramel latte from Starbucks but just making her own versions and things like that so I think that was really helpful and something that I used to do all the time when I began my health journey yeah but um, I've done less so in recent years just because I think you kind of get lazy as you get further on in your journey and I was I think a lot of people think that I was always like slim, but I had probably like 35 pounds on me versus like who, where I am today. And I think I want to talk more about like how I got into my fitness journey and like how I changed and um, updated a lot of my habits and things like that. So I'll share, I'll share that later. Um, but yeah, I think like the swap idea was something that I really did early on and then um, not so much anymore so that was a really good kind of reminder and just cooking at home and kind of getting excited to be back in the kitchen i think i just sort of this past year like san francisco restaurants are so good and like my social life i don't really go out to like drink and stuff that much anymore so like when i go see friends or when i have dates they're just with my boyfriend um we go out for dinner like that's what we do and I don't want to cut that out of my life completely but I think um, refocusing in on making sure that I am making a good amount of my food at home and bringing it with me to school is also great for you know even though the groceries up front were more expensive it's like how expensive food is in San Francisco it's actually worked out to be less expensive to just buy your groceries than to eat out all the time which i know but you know, sometimes when you go to make like a 200 dollars grocery purchase it's hard to like get yourself to spend that much money but um yeah overall like i never felt sick deprived like i think sometimes when you try a celebrity diets like you feel hungry like never felt that way and granted this wasn't a meal plan this is just like me eating her um recipes but i i did a lot of research and i would try to you know eat similarly to her all day and like the girl eats and i think that's awesome and, and like i wish more celebrities kind of showed that and like like hey i do eat a lot of food but it's healthy food and i'm not hungry and um yeah so i, I thought all of that was really good and never felt deprived um but yeah i'll definitely keep using that cookbook and i and i've really kind of found like my groove and and ex excitement back in the kitchen and making like nut milks and things like that which I've kind of gone on and off of being excited about cooking through the past like eight years so to sort of be reinvigorated and excited to cook is awesome so yeah overall like two thumbs up from me I 100% love how she does live a balanced lifestyle and yeah she's a little crazy when it comes down to like what's in her food and like how she chooses to buy her groceries but at the end of the day like the food industry has changed so much and what they put what is put into food is just so crazy like every time i go to the, abroad and i eat abroad 
I'll eat 10 times more and lose weight simply because like they don't put as much crazy stuff in food. Uh, I mean, that's changing as you see like more and more places becoming like super um, like commercialized and things like that. But yeah, I think what you eat is a huge, like there's this kind of myth that's propagated like, oh, just eat diet foods and you'll look good. But in reality, like a lot of those diet foods, like for instance, reduced fat, wheat thins, like just have more sugar to make up with the fact that they don't have as much fat to make it taste good, which spikes like insulin spikes and things like that. And then you end up overeating or, you know, Diet Coke is a perfect example. If you drink Diet Coke without anything in your stomach, um, your body has the same response to sugar because it thinks it's sugar. And then you actually get more hungry than if you were to um, just drink like water or something like that or a regular Coke. So, and not to mention like there's a bunch of chemicals and things like that. And I'm somebody who does enjoy Diet Coke every so often or does, you know, eat like a regular cookie and whatever and I think that's fine that's part of my 20% um, but it, it was just a really good reminder like if you eat whole foods if you really just take you know a lot of the complexity out of it and go back to basics uh, you can feel satiated while looking really good and I think you know most people who get into like unhealthy diet habits it's like they're trying to reach a certain physical goal that is very hard to reach eating like processed foods because the way that your body like all the things that i just mentioned the way that your body reacts so if you're just eating whole foods and you don't have that like addictiveness that a lot of like packaged foods they're good for a reason you know like chips you can't stop at one for a reason um but you know if you're eating carrots it's like your body's like okay i've had enough carrots for today so anyway huge fan felt really good definitely will continue to eat like this and um i've actually been thinking like should i do another challenge and who should i do or would you like to see more of kristen's recipes i could eat like her for another few weeks and call like a month so let me know what you guys want to see and i'll do that and somebody said like oh yeah i'd stop doing celebrity stuff and just do your own stuff most of what is on my channel is just what i personally eat um the thing about doing celebrity diets is that I'm still growing and it's really helpful from like a discovery standpoint for people to find me if I'm um, you know copying celeb diets and things like that so yeah if it's you know I'm happy to do a balance between the two but just to explain why I do the celebrity ones as well um so yeah thank you guys so much for tuning in this is Gregory if you haven't met him and um yeah, thanks so much and goodbye from San Francisco.